Now let us talk about the problems of the agriculture sector. What problem it has faced? It is a sector which has grown slowly and which has shown uneven growth. Why it has grown slowly and why it has shown uneven growth? Because it is a sector which depends highly on nature. When the monsoon is good, the agriculture produce is good and when the monsoon is not good, it is adversely affected. So, it, because it depends on nature, there is uneven rainfall, that is why the growth has also been uneven. Wheat has grown at a higher rate in comparison to other crops. The green revolution that was brought, it showed major benefit was shown to wheat only. Then there is regional imbalance. There are certain areas where like in North India, farming has progressed. The technology is used by farmers. They are also modern. But there are certain sec uh, portions of India like Northeast they are only into production of tea and no other, maybe because of the regional uh, or geographical conditions, but the government has not even tried to develop those sections or even in south, the regional imbalances there. And not much emphasis has been given on horticulture or fisheries, fisheries is pisciculture, horticulture, flowers and all, not much Emphasis is given on these sectors. We should emphasize, the government should emphasize more on uh, increasing the production of vegetables, fruits, flowers, uh, dairy products, but they have lacked emphasis. More emphasis has always been on major crops, major cereals like re rice and wheat. Second, most important problem, most uh, problem that we faced is of low yield. We are the second largest producer when it comes to wheat and rice. Rice and wheat. We are the second largest producer. But when we talk about yield, the production, we stand 52nd in place of rice and 38th in uh, position in production of wheat. The land that is there, that we are using, is too much in comparison to other countries. The land that we are using, the availability, India is a big country, the land that is available for farming is large in comparison to other countries. So the area that we are using, area that we are using is very much in comparison to other countries. The other countries are using smaller areas to produce the same amount of good and we are using larger areas to produce that amount of good. So our productivity is very less. Our productivity is less. We use larger area to produce that much amount of good. Though we are producing, because we have larger area, we are producing more. So production wise, yes, we are second in production of rice and wheat. But productivity wise, when you see per area, per hectare production, we stand at 52nd position in, uh, in case of rice and on 38th position in case of wheat. So, low yield is another problem that we face. The agriculture has not modernized as much as it should have been. The high yielding variety program has been has spread to only 44% of the total agriculture produce that is being done. The crop area covered is just 44%. Still, there are a lot of areas where old and primitive methods are used for farming. Irrigation covers only 45%, the rest of the 55% is rain fed or they are dependent on rain. Only 45% of the agriculture is uh, being done by irrigation is done by canals and tube wells. The rest is all dependent on rain. And for that, rain area development program has also been lodged by the government. So how to preserve rain water, how to use them for in future. For all that, the government has launched a program. Only 25% farms are mechanized in India, whereas in comparison to America, where 90% of the farms are mechanized. So you can see that being a primary sector, most important sector, only 25% of it is mechanized. The rest is still. So we are still, a lot of uh, things are net need to be done. We are still a lot of way to go. Then there are again flaws in land reforms. It seems that everything has been put in order, but it is not so. 
because every state is following their own land reforms it is different for every state so not all are complying to it fully still there are places where the farmer is forced to surrender unwillingly he is forced by rich landlords or the zamindars still that system prevails and where when we had talked about tenancy reforms we were, we had told you that there was a small like if the farmer zamindar owned a big land then it was taken away from that so that they also have taken out a by way for it you can say that they transfer it to their relatives name so uh, technically it remains their own property so all these flaws are there it has not been implemented completely it is not that the poor farmers have been given land all that is on paper but uh, practically the problem still prevails now the problem relating to finance is a major problem earlier the main source of loans to the farmers was the rich money lenders of the villages they were nearly 70% finance 70 to 75% finances were done by this rich money lenders they were done by these rich money lenders which exploited the farmers they made them sign the farmers were illiterate they gave their thumb impressions on papers which Uh, had unfavorable conditions for the farmers they had to transfer their land so they had to pay high rate of interest that was the farmers money lending the farm money lenders were a farmer the second problem was the banks themselves when india had attained independence the banks were in privatized hands with the main motive of earning profit they were mostly situated in the cities and very few banks were there in the uh, villages rural areas that were there they were also out of reach of the farmers because they charged high rate of interest which was not suitable to the farmers so that was a major problem after independence in 1969 many banks were nationalized so now only 27% of the finances are done by the money lenders banks have been set up specially national bank for agriculture and rural development nabard which is nabard National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development was set up in 1982 based on the recommendation of Shivaraman committee to look after the loans and lendings of rural and rural areas and farming sector both the sectors when i talk of farming i do not only mean rural and farming are not synonymous there are many other industries also that prosper in the rural section so be very careful rural not only means farming rural sector and for the farming sector for both the sector agriculture sector nabard was set up it is an apex bank like what rbi is to commercial banks nabard is to rural banks and regional rural banks were also set up to provide finances to rural people many times you would face question like rrb was uh, regional rural banks as you call them rrbs were set up to finance weaker section of the rural society no they were set up to provide help to the rural section rural people weaker rural people people who are into uh, small scale industries people who are into farming all those they were basically set up to support the rural people similarly cooperative credit societies were set up to finance rural projects at low rate of interest so these were the finances these were the things that were introduced to help the farmers and the rural people to solve their problems so banks were also nationalized so that they could serve the purpose money lenders uh, they could free them farmers from the clutches of money lenders and nabard was set up in the year 1982 to help the rural section now steps to enhance credit support to farmers many schemes have been launched farm credit package has been launched in the year 2004 to help them then credit card scheme has been launched specially for the farmers which is called as kisan credit scheme it was launched in 1998 and then it was reintroduced in the year 2012 crop loans now loans are given for crops on concessional rate of interest to the farmers many a times agriculture debts are waived off by the government and many debt relief schemes are introduced by the government when there are problems when the monsoon is not good then the nabard refinances scheme refinances schemes means that it provides loans to rrbs regional rural banks 
land development banks credit cooperative societies all these things so that there is no shortage of funds and they can provide finances to the rural section or the agriculture sector so nabard which is the apex bank of agriculture sector which was established in 1982 refinances the schemes and there are other financial institutions also have been set up and there are other uh, financial sources to help the agriculture sector steps to enhance credit supports to farmers still the following problem remains still there are problems that are remaining one is that the agriculture loans are concentrated in certain regions only like you have such uh, banks like agricultural banks and all they are mostly in the so south portion south southern india they are mostly in the southern areas whereas you know we had talked about it that the farming activities are more in the northern uh, areas of india whereas the bank facility the credit facility is more easily available the more banks in the southern uh, india so that is a problem then 40% of the loans that are given then are not repaid they are problem of they are treated as non performing assets because the farmers are not in a condition when the monsoon is not good they are not able to repay their loans so 40% of the loans are treated as bad debts then again major beneficiaries are large and medium farmers the small farmers which actually need the fund are still the banks they have still not been able to approach the banks because they feel that it is something that is unapproachable they are still not aware of the facilities that they can get from them so major beneficiaries are still the large and medium farmers and it is also that there is a lack of skilled staff to deal with the rural people you need to have their type of people so that is also a when an urban uh, person from the urban area goes to the rural areas he has a different approach so there is a lack of skilled staff to deal with the conditions in the rural areas so these are the problems that are still faced by the finance sector in the agriculture area now the major problem that has been there is about warehousing and marketing warehousing is storing storage the main problem has been whatever is produced if whatever is produced is sold in the market then also it is a big thing because nearly 10% or 15% of the produce that is of the uh, produce gets destroyed because of poor storage facilities farmers still use primitive storage techniques like either they put their uh, produce in digs and holes or they use it to store it in the kachcha houses that they make on their farms so what happens the crop gets spoiled it is eaten up by rats and rabbits and all these things and when it is stored in the kachcha houses it gets wet due to rains or due to dew or fogs in the winters so all these are the things that uh, are still a problem there is still a problem regarding storage for that purpose food corporation of india was set up fci which deals with storage procurement and distribution so fci is food corporation of india which procures which buys which gets crops or the produce from the farmers it stores them and then it distributes them to be sold in the market so all these three functions fci provides storage procurement and distribution there is there is another problem is of middlemen middlemen that were there agriculture for that purpose agriculture produce market committee apmc have been set up in which the crop is brought to the apmc and that sells it into the market when the middlemen were there from the farmer to the final consumer they were a chain of middlemen and what happened because of that the farmer was selling his crop at 50 rupees suppose per kg and the consumer was paying 150 per kg for it so the farmer is selling the neither the farmer is benefiting nor the consumer is benefiting who is benefiting the chain of middlemen 
so this is still there and for that purpose agriculture produce market committee has been set up but still the problem prevails it is it seems that apmc is like a monopoly government monopoly uh, kind of thing is there so we still need to work on this then there are many other malpractices that are prevalent there is underweighing of the the farmer is there are still many farmers that are not educated so uh, they are fooled by underweighing of their produce then there are it is uh, made to them that there is unauthorized fees and taxes that are levied which reduces the price of his good then there are poor transportation facilities uh, the agriculture good that is produced that is not sold on time in the market and it gets destroyed or spoiled then there is lack of proper grading there is no superior quality goods there is no distinction between superior quality and inferior quality goods the both are sold at the same price so there is no motivation for the farmer to produce better quality goods similarly ration and fair shops have been fair price shops have been opened by the government so that the uh, agriculture produce could be made available to the people at a uh, reasonable rate but still then there are also middlemen and uh, all because of this this facility is also not fully availed by the general public now the steps that have been taken to improve that the kisan call centers have been set up if the kisan has any problem if the farmer has any problem regarding and queries regarding his uh, agriculture produce he can call at the call center similarly agri clinics and agri business centers have been set up to help farmer know that how he can sell his uh, produce at a better rate how can he get a good market for them similarly kkms and national policy for farmers has been introduced which tells the farmers how to use rain water more effectively how to use the new technologies to get better produce and to make farmer more aware of the markets around him so that he can get a good price then crop insurance is there as i have told you that the crop gets insured in case it gets spoiled then the farmer does not has to suffer a setback and fci is very important food corporation of india which played a very important role it does the storage procurement and distribution thing which is uh, saves the crop from getting spoiled so these are the problems that the agriculture sector face faces there is slow and uneven growth we know why the slow growth because it is dependent on ag uh, monsoon the agriculture has not modernized as much as it should have there have been flaws in land reforms they have not been completely implemented then there are problems related to finance it is still 27% of the farmers are still dependent on money lenders the problem is still there but we have come a long way from there but the problem is still there then there is problem relating to warehousing and marketing and fci has been set up for this purpose and apmc agriculture product marketing committee which markets the food product and the products and fci which helps in storage